All right, we're starting on chapter two. When Jamal got up in the morning, the first thing he heard was the sound of Mama's gospel radio station coming from the kitchen. He looked at the clock on the end table. It was almost seven o'clock. He got up, wiped his eyes with his hands, and headed for the bathroom. Since Randy had gone to prison, he had moved out of the pull-out bed in the living room, and Sassy had the small bedroom all to herself. He splashed water on his face, then decided to take a shower. He didn't remember about the hot water until after he had stepped into the bathtub. It had been off for two days. He turned the cold water on and stayed in the shower until it was too cold to stand, then hopped out. Sometimes, when the water wasn't really freezing cold, he could take a whole shower in the cold water. Randy's stuff was still in the cabinet over the sink. Mama had brought his older brother all new stuff on her first visit to the upstate prison. Jamal put some of Randy's aftershave lotion on his hands, rubbed them together briskly, and then rubbed them on his face. He liked the way the lotion smelled. He finished drying off, then went and got his clothes from where he had folded them neatly on a chair the night before. He dressed and went into the kitchen. Morning, Mama stood at the stove. Morning. Sassy up? She wasn't up before, Jamal said. I'll wake her up. She can sleep a little longer, Mama said. She can sleep all day if you let her, Jamal said. We ain't got no eggs. Mama had made tea and put a cup down for Jamal. The toast was already on the table. You got on a clean undershirt? Yes, ma'am. Mama sat down from across from Jamal and started putting sugar into her tea. She looked up when Sassy came out of her room. Morning, everybody. Sassy, her eyes still closed, said in a sing-song voice. Morning, baby. Mama smiled when she saw Sassy in her Chinese pajamas. Sassy was eight and coffee-colored like her father, but she had wide eyes like Mama and Jamal. I said morning, everybody, Sassy said. My name ain't no everybody, Jamal said. Then how you know I'm talking to you, Sassy said, her voice full of triumph as she made her way toward the bathroom. I hope you walk into the wall, Jamal said, seeing her eyes were still closed. Sassy went into the bathroom without walking into the walls and closed the door. I don't think she really got her eyes closed, Jamal said. You know what Randy said to me yesterday, Mama said? What? He said you should go and see Mac. I thought I couldn't go up there. Mac got out last week, Mama said. Oh, what you know about Mac? I know he used to come here with Randy, Jamal said. Why you think Randy wants you to see him? Mama's voice rose ever so slightly, and Jamal looked up at her. I don't know, Jamal said. What am I supposed to see him about? He just said he wanted him to tell you who to look out for in the scorpions. Mama put another teaspoon of sugar in her tea. Jamal, you ain't been hanging around the scorpions, have you? You know I don't hang around no scorpions, Jamal said. I don't want you hanging around no Mac, either. I don't hang around nobody, Jamal said. You want some more toast? Uh-uh. Sassy came out of the bathroom and shuffled across the floor to her bedroom. Don't be taken all day to get dressed, Mama said. Can I wear my pink blouse? Yeah, go ahead. Sassy came over to the table and took a piece of toast. She took it with her to the bedroom. Jamal could never understand how his sister could eat toast with nothing on it. A brown and white pigeon flew onto the ledge of the closed window. Jamal put his finger to his lips and then indicated the presence of the bird with a nod of his head. The pigeon walked from one side of their window ledge to the other. Jamal could see other pigeons lined up on the building across the street. They sat in groups of twos and threes, nearly motionless in the hard October sun, their gray bodies looking like stones on the edge of the roof. He don't even know we hear, Jamal said softly. He know, Mama said. There was something about Mama's voice, something that made her sound tired, even though the day was just starting. You think I should give him some toast? Jamal asked. But before she could answer, another pigeon landed on the ledge, and then the two of them took off. Guess they don't want your toast, Mama said. You ain't going to drink that tea, Jamal said, smiling as his mother put more sugar into the cup. So what you going to do, Mama asked, ignoring his remark about the tea. What you mean? Mac, you going to see him? What do you want me to do? Any of those scorpions say anything to you? No. Then why does Randy want Mac to tell you who to look out for? I don't know. Jamal Hicks, are you lying? No, ma'am. Sassy came out of the bedroom in her blue skirt and pink blouse. She was greasing her hair. What do you got your good blouse on for? Mama asked. 
You said I could wear it, Sassy stood at the end of the table holding her hair. Don't wear that blouse to school, Sassy. But why you say I could wear it if I can't? I said you could wear it. Uh, okay, go on. Sassy gave her mother a look and went back into the bedroom to change her blouse. Jamal, you know I'm worried about that Mac boy, Mama said. I don't think he right in the head. I ain't hanging out with him or nothing, Jamal said. He counted the pieces of toast that were left. Three. He had had two already. He got up and got a drink of water. There's milk in the refrigerator, Mama said. What you drink of water for? I just wanted some, Jamal answered. So you ain't going to see Mac? Uh-uh. Maybe you should, if Randy thinks somebody might bother you, Mama said. Maybe, Jamal said. Jamal didn't like Mac. Mac was different from anyone Jamal had ever met. He had a strange way of talking, running his words together so that it was hard to understand him. Sometimes it seemed that he had trouble understanding things, too. Jamal had once seen Randy ask Mac what time it was, and had seen Mac look at the clock and then say he didn't know. But more than anything, it was the fights that Mac got into. The summer before Randy had gotten into trouble, Mac had been in the juvenile home for breaking a man's arm with a baseball bat. The man had stepped on his shoes. Mama didn't know that, but Jamal did. He my ace, Randy used to say. You get in a fight or something, you need an ace, man. Mac had been with Randy and another guy named Willie Pugh when they pulled the stick up. According to the papers, it was Randy and Willie who had gone into the delicatessen with Mac outside. Oops as the lookout. Willie was only 14, so he went to juvenile court. Mac was 15, and Randy was the oldest at 17, and they were both tried as adults. When the story got into the paper about the delicatessen owner being killed, everybody on the block was talking about it. Then Mac started bragging about how he had done it. Nobody believed Mac, not even the other scorpions, but somebody dropped a dime on him, and the cops picked him up. Jamal heard an old lady say that Mac was just foolish, maybe even addle-headed. He gonna mess around, the dark squat, squat woman had said, and they gonna put that murder right on him. Jamal thought she was probably right. He hadn't known then that Mac had been involved in the murder and that Randy had been with him. All right, so your homework for chapter two. Why is Randy, Jamal's brother, in jail? Why is Randy, Jamal's brother, in jail? All right, answer that in just a complete sentence. That's it.